The success of The Shadow was shared by Blue Coal. Billboard reported that 12 months after the premiere, their sales were up nearly 11%. Blue Coal was selling for as much as $2 per ton more than their competitors. In February of 1938, Orson Welles opined that radio's future bigwigs will be college graduates. By then, more than 90 colleges offered courses in radio speech, while radio writing was taught at 57 colleges, and 53 colleges were teaching radio acting. Both radio music and radio law were also becoming class offerings. The last episode of The Shadow's Autumn Run aired on March 20th, 1938. Although everyone knew who played Lamont, for the first time on air, Orson Welles was given credit for his role. And now, ladies and gentlemen, that interesting message we promised you. The part of Lamont Cranston and The Shadow has been played by one of the most distinguished figures in the theater today, Mr. Orson Welles, famous for his production of Shakespeare in Modern Dress, a director of the Mercury Theater, producer of Broadway hits like Julius Caesar and The Shoemaker's Holiday. Mr. Wells, still a very young man, is making for himself a unique place in the field of dramatic art. We have been indeed fortunate in having Mr. Wells on our shadow programs. But now I know all of you would like to hear a few words from Mr. Wells. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Words can hardly express my great enjoyment in doing this program for you. And now before I leave you, I want to thank our sponsors, Blue Coal, for giving me the opportunity of doing this show. I want to thank our cast for the wonderful work they've done throughout our entire season. And above all, I want to thank you, our listeners, for your loyalty. We all hope you've enjoyed listening to the shows as much as we have playing them. You know, in the theater, we can see our audience. We're able to tell how well we're received by the applause we get. But unfortunately, we have no way of knowing how much you've enjoyed us over the air. Wait, Orson, may I make a suggestion? I certainly, Agnes Moorhead, or should I say Margot Lane. <laughs> there is a way. If you've enjoyed this program and would like to let Mr. Wells and all of us know about it, simply phone your nearest blue coal dealer and tell him so tomorrow morning. Tell him how much you've enjoyed the adventures of the shadow. A very fine idea, Agnes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, good night and goodbye. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Wells. And let's all take Agnes Moorhead's suggestion and give the cast the volume of applause they deserve. Phone your nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow morning. Tell him how much you've enjoyed the adventures of the shadow and that you'd like the shadow programs to resume again in the fall. <laughs> As you sow evil, so shall you reap evil. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Wells was contracted to produce 26 more episodes for a syndicated summer run. They co-starred Margot Stevenson as Margot Lane. Ironically, the character was named for Miss Stevenson, who was originally supposed to play the role that fall. Goodrich Tires would sponsor the summer run, while Blue Coal immediately signed on for another season in the fall. Agnes Moorhead would again play Margot, but Wells would be leaving for CBS that summer and taking the Mercury Theater troupe with him. Austin was ready to go on to bigger things. He was ready to go on from the theater to Hollywood for the production of Citizen Kane. And so we no longer would have Orson, and we were sure the show would go off the air, as I just mentioned. But wonder of wonders, it did not. The program was strong enough to continue with other people in the role of Lamont Cranston. One of the first of them was Bill Johnstone. 